Hello, welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Antonia. Today we're going to be doing our June monthly wrap up of all the books that we've read. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Realize I've been an absolute divvy. So there's not even been time for like an STI test. Do you know what I mean? Like that's how quick this is progressing. So I managed to read five books in the month of June, which isn't crazy. The more booktube that I am exposing myself to, I'm realizing that like me reading five books a month is like a week's worth compared to other people but for me it's quite a lot progressively i'm reading more and more every month i've currently read six books and i'm on my seventh book this month in july we're only on the first week of july well technically second now isn't it since the 11th uh, which is when i'm filming this video hopefully you'll see this in the next couple of days so yeah i mean but i've had a week off so i'm blaming that i'm blaming that now, I managed to finish the Chestnut Spring series in June and honestly, that series had me in a chokehold. So I started reading it in May um, and then in June, I firstly read Powerless. This was about Jasper and Sloane. Now, if you haven't heard of the Chestnut Spring series, please go and read it. But for me personally, I give Powerless the lowest rating. I say lowest, the rest for me, like a five star read. So this one I give like a 4.25. I enjoyed it. I just didn't love it. I felt like, I did love it. Let me like, I did love it. I just didn't love their story as much as I loved everyone else's stories. Now, just so you know that all the books I'm going to talk about, apart from one, are all on Kindle Unlimited, which is why I've got my Kindle here. I have had Kindle Unlimited since I got the Kindle in November. And honestly, I love it. I bought my very first Kindle book this week because it is on Kindle Unlimited, obviously. And I just think Kindle Unlimited is such like a money save. To, compared to buying physical books, it's so much cheaper. And I personally am an ebook reader girly now. I do enjoy reading the paperback as well, but not a hardback, which if you watch my last video, which I'll link here, you can go and see how I had like a breakdown reading Happy Places and Hardback because it just was not a bit of me. Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Number one, how dare you? But I definitely would recommend reading Jasper's story. I just thought it was really nice. It was like a forbidden kind of love i'm assuming to some point to sloan is the cousin of the life of me i can't remember what the brother's surname is but she's a cousin of the main family that's all to do with the chestnut springs and all the brothers of the books is what we get but he's classed as like the brother because obviously he finds out his background so i don't want to spoil that and that is beautiful i do love that part of the book like the background of them um, even Sloan had such an amazing character development which is why I did love the book it was just their romance I just it's it, all I feel like Elsie's books are a slow burn it's by Elsie Silver by the way I haven't even mentioned that but all of her books are like a slow burn I just felt like this one was extra slow that was all but I enjoyed it I did enjoy it it just personally for me I preferred the other ones a little bit more just a little little, little bit more just a little bit next book that i read was the next one in the series which is reckless which is about Bo and bailey about eaton now i remember the same names eaton i mean i just need to say one of the names so yeah uh, the eaton brothers Bo was the one who got jasper into the family basically um which obviously you will find out as i said in the book i don't want to have any spoilers i try and do all my reviews without any spoilers Bo and bailey wow like their character development is unbelievable. Their romance is unbelievable. I absolutely love that book. That has a five star, hands down. It was absolutely amazing. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Like, I just love the Eaton Brothers so much. I love that family. Oh, I love them all. I love the dad, Harvey. Everyone keeps saying about him getting a book, and I would love Harvey to have a book. Please let me know in the comments down below if you would too, because honestly, like, I just oh it's just the best thing ever it's so good the banter in it is so funny harvey is hilarious like the things that he said in the to jasper over sloan and stuff was so funny saying so, you know, like again i don't want to spoil it but this is just a quote from one of the bits when he said about the baby coming out with like a tail if they had babies like that's like what he said like the babies have a tail because he counts it as like incesty because she's obviously related and he class him as a brother even though he isn't blood related so it isn't incesty it's not a game of thrones session so please don't worry if that's not a video but it's just so good i just i loved everything that was going on there was a lot of battle that was going on in the fifth book with Bo, obviously being in the army and stuff like that and 
if you've read the series you'll know that something happens about so it's about him recovering from that situation and honestly it's just from phenomenal it's just phenomenal five stars every day absolutely loved it now this next book is non kins unlimited this is a little novella which is a uh, christmas christmas in chestnut springs if you go onto elsie's website you can download the book from there and it'll like go onto like whatever device it is that you download it on and you can read it it's really really short i think it's like i don't know if it's 100 pages or just i think it is 100 i think it's really really short anyway it's literally like a little novella and it's like after all the books have ended it's like a little book with all of them in and each chapter is like dedicated to each like brother and obviously i'm gonna call jasper as a brother so it's dedicated to every single one of them in the relationships it was at this moment that he knew he fucked realized up. i've been an absolute dibby so hopeless is about bow and bailey reckless is about theo and winter and i'm so upset because reckless is my favorite book of the series and i can't believe i mix it up with what i was talking about i'm so sorry so i did read hopeless and that is a five star read i did read chestnut springs in christmas that was after them i will come to reckless now i did also give that a five star read because i just loved it i just loved that series so much but deep diving onto reckless because i'm an absolute mink and poop and didn't realize which one i was talking about Reckless is about Winter and Theo. Now, Winter is Summer's sister who's from the first book. Theo is in the bull riding racing. Bull racing? It's bull riding? It's bull riding because you don't race the, the bulls. The bull riding with Reese. I'm trying to remember everyone's names now. It's like a month out and my, my brain just can't fathom. That story, that book, sobbed. I, I cried honestly i love that book so much like i felt like i related so much to winter on so many levels like she's quite she's such a strong woman this is not me like tooting my own horn but she's so insecure in her own way and she's like so vulnerable but she doesn't like to let people see that size and it was just so beautiful that book was so beautiful like unbelievable i can't believe that i mixed up the titles i'm so so sorry about me being an absolute dafty but that was a five that was a six star basically like i loved that book so much i am gonna do a like six month mid-year wrap up and oh that's gonna be my next video so you need to subscribe if you want to see that but there's so much that i mentioned about that series in that video and it's amazing i'm so sorry that i got the title wrong please forgive me i'm an absolute dafty so yeah what red reckless which is honestly again my personal i think it's my favorite mm, i don't know if that's my favorite or i don't remember what the second book in the series is called but the one with Willa, I think that might be my favourite. I don't know whether I'd put Cade and Willa or whether I'd go for Winter and Theo, but I think I love them both quite equally for different things. So they're like my top two, but I honestly love them all. Like there was not one book, even when I say like Jasper wasn't my favourite, I'd still say it's like, again, it's a 4.25 star read. Like it's still amazing. Like I wouldn't say that any of it isn't worth the read because it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Like, I think I giggled the most of Jasper, so maybe it should be. They should all be five star. Like they're absolutely amazing. Elsie is a phenomenal writer, and like I just can't get over it. It's absolutely amazing. Then we finished June off with my personal least favorite book that I've read this whole year, Wrenched by Melanie Harlow. This book, I say waste, right? If you, I like a smutty book. I like a spicy like romance. That is fine by me. I love that. But what annoys me more than life itself is rushing a relationship. Like, saying it's something that, in my opinion, it isn't at all. And, like, I feel like it was so... Oh, it was just delusional. And I love a bit of Delulu. The Delulu is too strong in this one. Too strong. But, like, that, I just couldn't fathom it. I just could not fathom it at all. So... For this one, I think I'm going to have to do spoilers for you to understand the whole reason behind this. And I'm going to put the Kindle down because I feel like I need both hands to, to facilitate the way that I need to feel right now. So, again, if you like a spicy book, it's all for you. It Literally nearly every chapter after, like, the first few is basically sex in every single one of them. So, if that is a bit of you, absolutely fine. And the smart way it matters about it, as I said, like, I, I enjoy that type of read. So, that way the issue that I had. The issue, again, now we're going into spoilers, so I'm warning you. Don't shout at me that I didn't warn you. The book starts with the main character, I can't even remember the name, 
the main character, a fiance, has left it a week ago. And I can't remember anyone's name actually in this book, which is horrendous, but a character left it a week ago. Just a week, sorry, a character. Oh my God, am I okay? The main character's fiance left her a week before the wedding. Start off with she's like having an emotional breakdown. She's not leaving a bedroom. Her best friends come and they're like, come on, we need to like get a bit of you back. And she has a honeymoon coming up there. She's going to Paris and it's a dream to go to Paris. Anyway, her best friend's convinced her to go to Paris. She goes, like sees everyone's in love. And then she goes to a bar that night and meets the bartender. Now the bartender becomes a love interest. Now, how they met was fine with that. I wasn't even mad about this all the way up to this point. Like, I thought we were doing absolutely fine. It was just a complete shift in personality that stressed me out. So, they ended up going out the next day and he was like, I'll be your tour guide. Because she was planning on leaving Paris that night. She was like, I'm getting a plane tomorrow. Like, I've had enough. And he was like, give it one more day. Let me show you places that you've never been. And see if you want to give Paris another chance. So, obviously, she's old. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a book. So they're going around and they're looking at places and she's finding them attractive. Again, I can believe that. That's fine. Because as she finds out as the book goes on, her relationship with her ex wasn't perfect anyway. It had quite a lot of flaws. It was more, I think, like, it wasn't really, like, a love match. It was more, like, she kind of stuck with it because she did find them attractive, but it weren't what she wanted. That's fine. So you find out, like, she probably wasn't fully in love with her ex anyway. But then the second night, the day that she goes out with this lad and he's a tall guy, she sleeps with him that night. I have no issue with that. Gail, you do you. I've got no judgments like that. Not a problem. Not a problem. The problem fucking is, is literally like the next day they become like infatuated with each other. And that's fine. That's lust. But by like day two, this girl is like choking on the fact that she's fallen in love with this man. Eh? She didn't even know his surname and she's saying she's in love with him. I don't understand. I can't fathom it. I can't. I don't understand. By like day three or four, she ends up going to his, is it his father-in-law's or someone's like villa because someone's getting engaged. So she meets his whole fucking family, including his mother, on day like three or four, by the way. And then she's writing lists because the girl loves to write lists. And she's writing a list of like why she can't fall in love with him and all this shit. And I'm just like... When? When? When did this love happen? You don't know him. And I understand that, like, if you called a shoe a shoe, if you called this relationship as, like, a real sexual relationship, she's realised how much she was missing from an ex, which she did, and then she decides to continue a relationship with him. I was a complete... This, this rating would have been completely different, but the fact that this girl was choking on to say that she loved him after two days, I... I, I, I I'm a romance girly through and through, but and I, I would love to think a love at first sight exists, but that's not normal. Like, please let me know in the comments down below whether I'm just being crazy because I just don't think, like, how can you go from nearly marrying another man to then she was having a, a dilemma because this man never wants to get married and she does and she has this timeline that she wants to live on and she was fuming at the fact that he doesn't want to get married and she's like, but I do. And I'm thinking, you don't even know him. You don't even know him. You've just had a marriage fall down. What is this? Because you've still got the dress. Do you want to just like be like, I've got all the gear on. Let's just go and go off and get it done. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't, I just didn't understand. Like there was, for me, no progression. It's literally like become this lustful relationship, which again, I think she 100% needed. I think that was like a lovely match for the main character and obviously the love interest. But I just didn't get it. And then like he changed his mind on marriage because he couldn't live without it. And I'm thinking... You can't live without it. You literally didn't know this woman existed four days ago. And now you can't live without it. And now your whole premise and the fact that you never want to get married is completely up road because this woman wants to get married. So your whole morals and like life wants and, and this wants, this wants is not a word, but like everything, you, like the fact this man completely changed. And again, you can meet the right person that changes your idea on things and I completely get that. Like, at the minute, I don't think I want kids to an extent. Like, I think I do, but I don't know whether I do. And if I met the right person, I probably might change my mind on that. And I get that. But after four days, four days, that could be a serial killer. How do you know you don't know anything about them? You don't even know what food they like, hon. Like, you could not tell me what they order from McDonald's. Like, how are you telling me that you want to marry the kids? Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, honestly, it burnt me out. It absolutely burnt me out. And that's what annoyed me. 
as like she told him she loved him she let him whoa this is like deep heavy like it's not deep but wow i'm building this up to so much more but uh, it's a bit of a naughty sentence so if that's not a bit of you skip up which hopefully if you listen to spice books anyway she let him have sex with her without a condom and come inside her on like day two or three you don't there's not even been time for like an sti test do you know what I mean? Like, that's how quick this is progressing. So, I just... I don't know. I don't know. So, that was a really low rating for me. You can tell the difference of when I really love something. I'd, like, show on it because I want you to enjoy that story so much. And I don't want me to ruin it. But... And French has got, like, an alright rating on Goodreads, you know. I'm sure it's got, like, a four-star rating. And I'm thinking, am I just the problem? But it's more of the fact that I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't relate to the situation at all. Maybe because I've never been in love properly, that like that might have been my issue. I don't know. Please let me know in the comments down below whether I'm just being horrible. If you do want to like give it a read, as I said, all of them apart from the Christmas at Chestnut Springs are on Kindle Limited, so you can read it. The rest of the books in that series are not on Kindle Limited for the French. I don't know what the series is actually called, but the French like that book is like a first one of three. I'm assuming because she's got two mates. The other two books are going to be about mates, but um, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't want to continue with the rest of that book. I did finish the month off by starting to read Wild Love by Elsie Silva. And I got like 30% in. I did finish that last week. I obviously don't want to talk about that in this video because I will talk about that in July's uh, wrap up for the month. So again, make sure you do subscribe if you'd be interested in that. Please let me know whatever books that you've read this month and what your opinions are of them and if there's any book recommendations. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Really hope to see you in the next one. But for now, bye bye. bye. <laughs>